best and your name could be in the Hall of Fame. Good evening and welcome to Personality Profile here on Joy 99.7 FM. I'm Lexus Bill. It's a lovely Thursday evening. It affords us the opportunity to bring you a great conversation with people who are change makers, who are serving the motherland. Yeah, and tonight I have one amazing guest like that, a very hard-working brother who is serving as the Member of Parliament for Nsuam Adweji constituency. He's the Chairman of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Foreign Affairs and a member of the Subsidiary Legislation and Roads and Transport Committee. I mean, he's a hard-working brother. I mean, when he came to sit here, I saw him with a can of energy drink. Like, he needs the energy. He's tired. I- I'm actually even feeling guilty. <laughs> Taking him out of his busy schedule to have a conversation. But I'm glad he's here. Honorable Frank Anno Don Prayer is my guest on Personality Profile. Welcome, my brother. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> cheers, 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 cheers. Good to see you. I, I, I know you're down. You sound very down and tired, is it? Well, I mean, this is something we've been doing over years. Yeah. So, um, it is not something new. Um, I'm, I'm okay. Are you, are you trying to be macho about it? Oh, soldier. On. I thought you would just say, oh, yeah, Lexus, Don't I'm really I'm tired. A diplomat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, me, let me quickly say that I'm. Um, it's a big honor yeah. for me to be here and I've watched you from a distance let me also congratulate you for a good job done and also to say that for for your production team and your good self to find me worthy to sit in this hot seat uh, it's something I'm very proud of we're very honored as well we really are honored and we say kudos to you as well you're doing good and seven mother Ghana and I'm sure always that such in the pit yes always always but how are you doing though? How are you? What have you been well, up to? I know you've been b- a little busy these past couple of days, eh? Well, I think after primaries and then after the registration exercise, yeah. it, it took a toll on us because not just me, I mean every member of parliament. Mm. Uh, uh, we went under the branch of that right from primaries and then immediately the registration exercise followed suit. So, a uh, lot of pressure on us mm. and the parliament resumes again and there's a lot of work that has to be done. At the same time, you're also preparing for uh, big elections come December. Mm-hmm. And there's no time to waste at all. So, a lot of activities within a short. What is really occupying your time right now? Say well, the past couple of days. Well, um, to be very honest with you, um, a lot of uh, contractors who have raised certificates that I have to run after for payment to be affected. Okay. Well, sometimes you can say that, well, okay, if they've raised their certificate and they are due for payment, why do you have to go after it? Yeah. Because Sometimes it's just the system, and you have to go and push things and get things done. And I also, there are a number of projects. For instance, I'm the only member of parliament who has been able to lobby for um, three astroturf. Ah. And hence, the contractor contract has to be crafted, it has to be awarded, it has to go to PPA, and all the due process has to be met. Mm. And then, uh, contractors also need a bit of push in terms of funding to be able to execute this project. Yeah. And these three astroturfs are in your constituency? Yeah. yeah they okay. Are in the process of being built. And the constituents also n- need to be carried along. Yeah. Why projects are not being completed and what are in the process of being completed and what is the difficulty we are going through as yeah. leaders. So, yeah. Um, and I spend a lot of time in my constituency. I mean, my constituency almost every now and then. And probably because I'm I'm advantaged because of the proximity to yeah, Accra. Yes, and yes. And it's just 20 minutes barring traffic, yeah. just 20 minutes drive to, to in Sao Madreji. So these are the things occupying my yeah. time. Hopefully when the flyover is done, it will be lesser. <laughs> you are, you are, you are on point. You're on point. Uh, there are a few court cases in place. Okay. I'm praying that we'll be able to resolve them. Uh, compensation that are due yeah. that has to be paid. Yeah. If you are able to jump that hurdle, I'm sure that we'll be able to execute that. Well, good stuff. Now, how about campaigning to get re-elected? How is that going as well? Well, you, you see, we, we face a major challenge as a country and all con- our own members of parliament, incumbent members of parliament who are seeking re-election because people still don't understand the difficulty we operate within. Difficulty? Difficulty in terms of our rule, 
vis-a-vis what uh, MMDCs are supposed to execute, mm-hmm. vis-a-vis the fact that uh, a large chunk of uh, central government funding goes to the MMDCs, and yet there's a lot of expectation from us from uh, to execute on projects ranging from health, education, sanitation, everything. It's almost like the member of parliament has to do everything, mm. and sometimes it's very difficult. So combining that, and then explaining to Constance on the things you cannot do, the things that you can do, yeah. and why you cannot do what you cannot do. Yeah. It's sometimes difficult because we bear parts of the guilt in the course of you know, campaigning. Yeah. We say all sorts of things. And then when you come to office, you realize that <laughs> it's not as easy it's as not you thought. It's, it's not as easy as you so thought. It's not easy, but yeah, we are pushing on. So uh, what? Are, are you complaining? No, I'm not. <laughs> okay. I pray to God. No, uh, I would never, never complain. Okay. okay. Um, I'm quite religious. I pray to God yeah. to serve my people, and God listens to my prayer and puts me in the seat. I, I should be the last person to be complaining. But I also have, it is also reasonable on my part yeah. to, to let my people know uh, the challenges I'm going through. Yeah. And hence, they yeah. can empathize and understand mm. uh, the difficulties I have, and hence, will be able to. Uh, be a bit considerate in the expectations. Well, we're just a few weeks, if I can say, from elections. Do you think they understand? Well, some do understand. Some, some do don't. understand, eh? Some, yes, yeah, some do understand uh, because of the constant engagement. Mm. Community engagement. Uh, I've done a couple of radio state, radio interviews to also reach out to our yeah. people. And I do a lot of um, door-to-door, one-on-one campaign. Yeah. Uh, some do understand. Others don't. And I don't blame them. So I have more job to do. Does it does it look more positive than negative? It looks positive. It looks positive. Yes, it looks positive. You're right. confident that you, they would retain you? Yes, I'm not overconfident, but I'm confident okay. uh, because of uh, the few things I've been able to do and the sincerity on my part that I've displayed over the years. Mm. Yes. If you, if they retain you, what would make them retain you? They'll retain me for one, uh, one my availability to them and then the things I've done so far. And also being sincere about things I cannot do. Okay. I think these are going to be uh, the few motivations. So that's to say you don't just go about promising your constituents things you cannot do. Yes, of course. And you see, uh, it's a learning curve. We all learn, Mm. you know. Um, As a member of parliament, I draw inspiration from the overarching dream of my um, flag bearer and now president. The president is talking about free SHS. And I've bought into it. I also have a responsibility to explain it down to my people. The president speaks to one district, one factory. I understand it. Most countries across the world, the emerging powers, and all the countries that are being spoken about in the world today, who are very good examples and admirable examples, that is the path most of them have blazed. Yeah. I mean, you can name countries like Korea, who once upon a time were at the same level of that. They kept faith with a certain belief and a certain model of development, and that has transformed the country, Korea, as it is now, India, Singapore. And I believe if we are able to put, put our, our legs on the pedal and keep to faith and work hard, we'll be able to transform this country. Well, good stuff. Before we all get all political, we need to get to know you a little bit. You know, that's why we're here on Personality Profile. But even before then as well, I know you are equally gutted about the happenings in Nigeria, uh, military shooting protesters, citizens not relenting in their demands, and especially also because you're the chairperson for the Parliamentary Select Committee on Foreign Affairs. You'll be concerned about what's going on in Nigeria, right? Certainly I am. I am concerned. Uh, Don't forget, um, beyond the fact that uh, Ghana, you know, we are so close to Nigeria, and Nigeria has I mean, it's like a twin um, country. We are so close to Nigeria. Nigeria is the biggest economy in Africa now. If you put aside all these, um, there's a possibility of a spillover effect. Okay. Then beyond that, lives being lost anywhere on this planet should be a concern to every human being. Mm. If you look at the UN Charter, and the motivation that gives birth to the UN Charter, protection of lives, protection of fundamental human rights, are key ingredients that inform the formation of the UN as a body protecting the world and, 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 and the, the, glo- the, the global state. So, 
Now, if you do a bit of an analysis of what is happening in Nigeria, I think that the intention behind the the directives that were given, the formation of that groupings in the police service and the security service, it was towards an, a good purpose. Mm. Yet, um, I don't think that they were laced with an ulterior motive at the point of inception or conception. Yeah, yeah. But in the course of execution, they've stepped the boundaries and their excesses. I think that it's, it's worrying, especially where lives are being lost. And then the youth have taken to protest in a very civil approach. Uh, in the initial stage until, you know, things got out of hand. It can happen anywhere in the world. Yeah. I'm telling you, Ghana is blessed, but we don't have to be uh, complacent and feel that these things cannot happen in our country. So we all have to be concerned. And if you as, as, as a leader yourself, you're a leader, and of course with such widespread unrest, like you said, it can happen anywhere yeah. else. What do you think needs to be done? Sincerely, um, our president, with Ekoa's leader, has spoken. Of course, she has spoken. Mm. Um, other world leaders, um, huge personalities in, in the globe have also spoken. But fact to be told, a lot lies on the shoulders of President Buhari. Okay, it is difficult to distinguish the role of the president uh, and then the excesses being executed or being perpetrated on the on innocent lives. And hence, President Buhari will have to show more leadership. Mm. For me, the Nigerian people themselves must show a will to to resolve this matter, and that it has to be done by engagement, mediation. Yeah. If you look at I was just going to the history of the Book of Haram when it started. It wasn't as violent as it is today. And it was when the military was, was you know, pushed on them and key personalities of the Book of Haram movement, if I'm allowed to put that away, were killed. That was when they got very rowdy. Mm. So at this stage, it is critical that President Buhari engages the youth groups and other parties who are involved in this in this whole protest yeah. at this stage. Yeah. It has to be done immediately. Otherwise, when it degenerates and it gets to a stand that people have taken an entrenched position, they will not even listen. Well, interesting. Thank you so much for your thoughts on that. But let's really get to know you today. I don't want you to feel like you're working because all the, the way you're throwing your hands and, you know, <laughs> it's like you're in your debating mood, like you're in the chamber. <laughs> when you also started, this is your comfort zone. And when you started, you you also did the same. <laughs> no, no, no. I need I need you to relax right yeah, now. Relax. I just got a message from your roommate, your former roommate um, in Shuffle Town, Leeds. Hey. <laughs> Benny Fifi Yes, yes, yes. He says, Ben, respect. Respect, respect to my you. My brother, my uh, respect, sir. During your hustling days oh, in 2000. Charlie, Charlie. <laughs> He's a good guy. He's we taking you to, back, eh? To, yes, at, at Leeds, and uh, there were the people who came to my rescue. Is it? But, yes, I got to London, and I didn't know anybody, and it was hell. But wow. they were they were, uh, they were very helpful. I'll, I'll get to that story, <laughs> but let's start off from where you grew up. Um, where were you okay, born? I was, was growing up like? Okay, I was born in Abdreji, small town. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, Close to know, the bridge. Yeah, <laughs> that is the... That is the the, the 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 town where the the best bread uh, bread is baked. Thank you very yeah, much. And the best trophy. <laughs> you are right. So you know, before the main road was constructed, <laughs> right? You know, we used to go through in Swam Adwejiri. Yeah, it's a lot of traffic. Yes, yes. <laughs> so on my way to Abumpe, <laughs> I go through in Swam Adwejiri, and I I make sure that I'll buy some yam and trophy on my way. Well, <laughs> so I, I'm yeah. not surprised you are doing wonders. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the trophy, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so okay. Uh, that was uh, I was born there, and mm. I, a few years, my father, my late father, a police officer, who moved around the country, okay. transfer, so basically a barrel boy, mm. and I kept disturbing him that I wanted to school at uh, St. Martin's, which is located in the heart of Adreji. Okay. He said no, and he took me all the way to Pandu in the Volta region. Bishop Herman. Bishop Herman. So Why did he say no? Well, you know, family people were just around. We have our family houses around, and he feels when I when I grew up there, I would not be disciplined enough. We would not go through 
the training that uh, a secondary school boy should go through. So, and I was quite quite a stubborn boy at that time. Really? Embarrassed boy and yeah. quite a stubborn. So you got into trouble a lot. A lot. Which one do you recall? Well, football. We are told not to go and play football. I go and play. You come back. You're not allowed to eat. You have to go to the kitchen and steal a few stuff. <laughs> the next day you are in trouble. Yeah, I know, right. So um, that was set, and I had mm. to go to Bishop Hem. I've never regretted. And today, wherever uh, he so is, I, I, I pray that God will grant him eternal life because it has paid off. Wow. I learned a lot of things at the school. I was had in, it was a boys' school. Yeah. It's still a boys' school. So a lot of training there. Then from Bishop Herman, um, uh, I, I went to University of Cape Coast to okay. do my first degree. Uh, then University of Cape Coast, uh, before then, before I got to Cape Coast University, um, my late father again, he was very political. He was political? Extremely political. A police officer who was that political. I've never seen anybody like that. And he was almost re- every day reading uh, f- uh, the Free Press and Chronicle. Remember the late Tommy Thompson, mm-hmm. Ebenezer Kwaku, who were prolific, wonderful writers. So he reads the papers, and I, I also go behind him and I pick it and I read mm. consistently. Then a certain political consciousness began to dawn on me ah. at that time. Then I started reading, serious reading. Um, at a point in time, my mother was away. I was, it was just myself and my father. Mm-hmm. So if your father goes to work, it's just you in the house. If I'm not playing on the field, I'm just reading. You, di- you didn't have siblings? No, a few of them. There's a few of them who were not also... Uh, my father had two wives, you know. Okay. And then many of my siblings had to stay with my my my, my step uh, mother. No. Okay. And I spent a lot of time with my 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 father. Okay. You know so how many siblings did you have? Um, we had ten. Ten. Yes. I'm the I'm the eighth born. I'm the last born of the boys. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that was where the reading started. Then suddenly I started engaging my father on political levels. Mm-hmm. Then he drawn me into the the the, the Dankobuzia tradition, uh. and he gradually engaged my mind. And then I must say that he built a sudden, for want of a better word, hatred against Rawlings at that time, and wow. because of the people who were killed or yeah. the excesses of the June Fourth and the likes. So from that age, I just I just didn't like President Rawlings. Because of all the stories I've been told about him, yeah, and the fact that he 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 looked like a, a certain wicked personality to me at that time. Mm-hmm. But growing up, I can say that now, I mean, I've relaxed in my beliefs and perceptions of him. Then from there, but w- but hold on, hold on. You you <laughs> when you say you've relaxed in your beliefs and perceptions perceptions of him, is it because you grew up and you got to know better, or you probably just matured out of those emotions? I think I've matured. Out of uh, those emotions, most of the things my father told me at that time, um, I still I checked. Most of them were still were truthful. You know? Most of them were tr- yes. were true. But I realized that he's human. President Rollins is human, and we all have our shortfalls and weaknesses. Yeah. And if you realize that it wasn't just him, there were a lot of people who were uh, who were with him in that operation. So you cannot. It would be most unfair to put everything on him. Yeah. So maturity comes in and a bit of reality and appreciation of what happened at that time. Okay. Now, if, if you had the opportunity to meet him now, what would you tell him? Well, uh, I would first of all want to know why some of these personalities were uh, had to be shot. Mm. You know, and then also to find out if he couldn't have forgiven some of them. I listened to some interview he granted to Kweku Sechado on one of your uh, uh, radios. Yeah. And I, I, I thought that the circumstances under which some people had to be killed was uh, was a bit strange at that time, and mm. many of the things could not be explained. Mm. Yeah, by extension, you do, you dislike the NDC? No, I I respect the NDC. I could have joined the NDC. Why? I think we are jumping the story, but it's good. I, you know, I became no surprise when I went to University of Cape Coast. Eventually, I won. I became the uh, the first as a student to become a nooks president. Right. And uh, uh, the Honorable Harun Idrisu, okay, who had uh, admired from a distance, I, I came close to him. And he tried everything he could 
for for me to join the NDC. I would have several years. Even as a listening. student, um, yeah. uh, the president of the you know, NUCS. You know what the NDC does? They are very good at tapping talent. Mm. They are very, very good at it. They tap people who show talent as student leaders, mm. even at that age, at okay. that being age. And then they, they, they support you to grow to become a politician, a full blown politician. Ah. So when I was NUCS president, several encounters I had with them. Um, uh, this uh, at all, at all, the one that who heads uh, has the folk, the, the grey hair, uh, Kwamina, at all, the Kwamina, at all, they are three. There's a Kwesi Ahoy, Ahoy, yeah, Kwesi Ahoy, Kwamina Ahoy, yes, Kwamina Ahoy. He, uh, severally through Harun Idris, who reached out to me that they wanted me, they thought I had talent, they wanted me to be with the NDC. And why didn't you? Again, because of what uh, my father told me about about the about the NDC about, about the Rollins. Rollins, yeah, yes, I mean about the Rollins, yeah. and I felt that the NDC was more of uh, a single personality party. Okay, and hence uh, at that time, this perception about he being a very wicked personality, yeah, is still associated with the tradition. So I was right to say that by extension. You kind of had a little bit of dislike I for the so. N- NDC. I think so. <laughs> okay. I think so. Okay. I think so. And so that's what stopped you from joining the NDC. Yes, that that puts me away. But yeah. I liked Haruna. Yeah. Is is Haruna? Among the few people in the NDC I admire. Mm. Haruna Idrisu, I think Ablakwa himself. Ablakwa, my ranking member. Yes. For Foreign Affairs, and then um, uh, Fifi Kote. Mm. Uh, these are people I admire. Okay, uh, but unfortunately, the, the way you, are, you have started mm. mentioning names, that means that you can actually count them. <laughs> there are few. There are few. Yes, there are few. <laughs> there are few. Very interesting and honest man here, <laughs> man. <laughs> Love it. Honorable Frank, I know Don Fred is a member of Parliament for Insom at jury live on Joy ninety nine point seven FM. Our WhatsApp number is activated. You can send us a message on zero five five one 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 one. Nine nine seven. If you have any questions for him, you can send them through. So go ahead with the story um, from. So yeah, the, the, uh, Haruna was persistent, mm. consistent. He 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 chased me all over the place, and at that time I nearly, I nearly gave in because I had staged a fight at the University of Cape Coast against their grading system. Mm. At that time, it was the only university in Ghana which was operating the eighty percent grading system okay and so previous leadership student leadership who have fought it um, could not succeed and then uh, with the benefit of hindsight lessons picked from previous leaders I thought I could do it so uh, <laughs> a number of mechanisms were put in place demonstrations here and there coming on talking point here and there just to make student uh, leadership unpopular at that time and to okay. prove to them that the decision to make University of Cape Coast operate the eighty percent grading system was flawed. Yeah. Especially in the face of the fact that facilities on the ground at that time at University of Cape Coast compared to other, you know, principal investing, yeah. uh, there was a bit of a yawning gap. And the university were not charitable at all. Uh, all the student leaders at that time were rascated. We were all just sacked. Ah. Yes, we were sacked. And it was a big, big, big matter then. Uh, I remember President Kufu had to come in, and as a student, as a NUCS president at that time, uh, it was a huge matter. My parents were on me here and there, and uh, some of them had to just stop school and travel outside to continue. Yeah. What did you do? I had an option. I had two options. I had a scholarship to go to Florida Costa School of Law. Mm-hmm. And then one scholarship was to go to Denmark. I turned all of them down because I felt that I wasn't a bundle of a fight. Mm. We had begun this process together to change the system. And it would be most unfair to leave the student midway. Mm. So I, I had to let go. And my certificate, my first degrees were held for three years. I finished University of Cape Coast the year 2000, 2001, I got my certificate 2004. Wow. Because the school authorities at that time felt that we had brought the name of the university into disrepute. 
we have done all sorts of <laughs> behaviors that we needed to be punished. Even though President Kufo came in at that time, mm -hmm. and, the, and the school authority has suddenly mm -hmm. had compromised on the, the earlier decision to rusticate us, there's all the court transference. They found a way to transfer that punishment. Okay. And me as a person, well, the leader at that time, had to, my certificate, my first degree has to be held for three years. Wow. And within the period, what did you do? Was well, that when you traveled to the UK? I traveled to the UK. There was a paper. They consistently, they had to write that paper three times. I had to come from the UK and write it, and I came, failed again. You go back, I come, I get filled again three times. Okay, I wanted to hear your phrase very well. Did you fail or they failed you? I don't think I failed. You don't think you failed? No, no. Well, you see, it's a debatable thing. Is, is it part of the transference? Is that what, what they call it? That, that is my conclusion. That's your conclusion? Yes, that is my personal conclusion. And the university authorities may have to prove it. Or they disagree. Yes. And, you, and, and then eventually they kept telling me that the degree is awarded. The degree is awarded. And for me, yeah. it spoke volumes to me. What did he say? It meant that to receive the degree or not, it's at their discretion. Mm. Not so much about you meriting it based on your academic work. Mm. You get the point. So it's one of the regrets I have about the university. What, what subject were you failing at that time? Uh, fisheries. Fisheries. Yes, I will never forget. Also, so they got pension and we do. Ah, don't you? Adreji. Rivers there. A lot of inchinam there, but yet they thought that my domestic inchinam skills was was not enough. <laughs> much up. You were you were studying theory. a bachelor of science in agriculture then, yes, right? Yes. And and at Greek we have the the, the, the largest number of credits hours. Mm. At Greek at University of Cape is just like BCom. Okay. Those two courses, you speak to anybody who had who went to University of Cape Coast and they'll tell you. So, I still cannot forgive the university anyway. You still but cannot I, forgive yes, the university. Yes. If you check my transcript, my first year, and the university can publish it, you can see how I was performing. Mm. Even though I accept that when I became NUC's president, I didn't have enough time to study. Mm. Some of the grades, I just didn't deserve them. But they were chanting them at me. Because... I mean, that's a very serious thing. Are, are you sure you, those were not the grades you, you, you merited? Because if you admit that, <laughs> you probably... Since you were Nukes president, you are really not making time and all of that. And you feel a few papers here and there. Then it means that it's legit. No, it's not. It was politically motivated. Uh, well, it was tainted with a certain motivation. Okay. Yes, and sometimes it's difficult to prove it, but uh, I. What will it take for you to forgive the university? I don't know. I I don't know, but uh, I I think that I'm, I'm I pray about it. Oh, you do. I do pray because on several occasions the university has invited me to speak, and uh, not been able to show up. You've turned them down. Yes, and so they've even given me awards, and I've I have to allow somebody to go and pick it up. So I'm just trying to find. Uh, you didn't reject the awards. Well, I, I didn't. I did not. <laughs> I did not reject the awards, but you, I you could not took go it, to but you don't it. like it. Uh, you you prefer your re your results. <laughs> uh, in, in, <laughs> in my heart of hearts, I didn't like it. Okay, when honorable. I, I, I want to know what it will take for you to forgive the university, or probably okay. for you to discard these sentiments you have of the university. Maybe God. God. Hmm. You see, one of the things I I find difficult to understand at that time is, um, I was only writing at the initial stage. I was just writing articles on campus. Um, trying to raise issues yeah. for student welfare, mm -hmm. um, university authorities, and student relationship. I had a painting on campus, the Crusading Sphere. Wow. And many, many uh, of my people who are listening will recall. I used to write a lot of articles, and I won a prize. I was, mm. a, I was awarded the best writer. Okay. 
You know, I was a science student, but I was doing a lot of uh, literary writing because, mm. I, as I told you earlier, I used to do a lot of <coughs> reading. So um, we were all trying to help to boost the image of the university. Unfortunately, some of us got uh, victimized. Victimized, for it, but for I'm that. hoping that we'll be able to scale that wall and move on because whatever it takes, I have to move on. Yeah, and put it behind yeah. me. Amazing. Mm -hmm. That's a very interesting story. Um, I'm actually hoping that mm -hmm. there comes a day you'd say, I've forgiven the university, and you probably turn up to deliver a speech. And when you get an invitation and you really mm -hmm. agree to accept, you know, to go and speak, I'd want to go with you. That would be fine. Yes, I'd, I'd really love fine. to go with you when you finally... I'm actually pleading with you and to you accept a speaking invitation and there. You, and you know, the things we did paid off because even though they did not amend the grading system mm -hmm. they put in processes and unannounced quizzes were taken off they put in processes that to make the system a bit more friendly and democratic yeah for want of a better word more democratic and for me uh it justified their action at least the university amended its modus operandi yeah yeah well if you're listening and you would want to ask any question or you want to share some thoughts, you can WhatsApp me on 055-1111-997. Kobe sent a message and says, Lexus, I'm not surprised he said agriculture. School of Agric in UCC had and still have all the mafia lecturers in the country. <laughs> I went through something similar, but still, fellow Kulai. Is that how you yeah, say? The Kulai. Yeah, Agri fellow Kulai. Yeah, That's fellow Kulai. Kulai. Please ask him which hall he was affiliated to. I was, I was in the Oli Hall. He knows. The uh, Holy Hall is Casford. Oh, that's right. Yes. Fellow Casford, hold Cassidy your ball. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Jeffrey says, Best MP, we're proud of you. So now that you got into mainstream politics, I think you got uh, into Parliament in 2013, thereabouts, yeah. as when you won the bid to represent Nswam Adwejri. Tell me how the journey has been. It was tough. Um, uh, I was working at the Damkwa Institute together with Gabi Ocheda Co. and Co. Mm. We used to write speeches for now President's Excellency. We used to do intel intelligence for him. Then um, um, I went in and contested for the youth leadership mm. for the Eastern Region because the previous election, I realized that we lost the election because we couldn't Ghana a lot of the votes we needed from our, our youth. So I had gone to then candidate Ekufado and mentioned to him that that is how I want to support. And he, I, I received his blessings. So I went to the Eastern Region, contested, and I won to become the Eastern Regional mm -hmm. Youth Organizer. We were politicking, taking on the mm -hmm. government, and doing all that we could. Yeah. Then came up the opportunity that there was going to be a split of uh, then Ekufado. Uh, a brie in Sanwon. It was a brie in Sanwon. Had to be split. And so I went in. And initially it was difficult because the tag that was put on me was, oh, you didn't have the money. Oh. Yes. You didn't have the money. I didn't have the resources. <laughs> That's how they call it, the, the money. Yeah. And indeed, I was just a party boy doing party work. I didn't have money. Even though I've done a few consultancy work for then Millennium Challenge account. Mm as a, a consultant. I was training farmers, preparing business plans for them. I could not have saved enough to be able to prosecute that agenda. But I was so confident that I could do the job. So I had to run with the late lawyer, Riafe, who is an old politician, a veteran. So when he saw me, he was like, oh, this is a small boy. I'm just going to defeat him. But he didn't know I had a plan B. Mm -hmm. And I was so determined so he had more resources. You know, I don't want to go into that, but he had more resources. I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, you keep mentioning resources, and I'm wondering, what do you need a resources for? I know you are getting at something. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, no, I'm just trying to understand you. Okay, you know, sometimes you have to make people happy. The people who want to vote for you. you. You have to make them happy. You have to make them happy. How? Well, you have to tie their hat. Some people give gifts. Uh -huh. People give transport. Okay. So, okay, we are coming to vote at a point. We move from the countryside to come and vote. So, give us transport and the likes. So, you, you have to literally facilitate 
It's become their part movement. Of, my brother, uh, you see, we have to face it. It's become part of our body politics in this country. Really? Yeah, it's, it's tough. So if you have 10,000 constituents who are supposed to come vote for you, you have to find a way of facilitating all of yes, them. Yes, but unfortunately we don't have 10,000. Nobody has 10,000 delegates. Oh, you're talking about delegates yeah, for now? Yeah, delegates for okay. now. Okay. So I had to do that. So he had more resources. He gave out more resources. And yet I won. Wow. But you also gave out some resources. Yes, I managed to squeeze a few. So like you <laughs> give a delegate like how much? Well, at that time, you know, I think I gave 30 Ghana. Okay. Yeah, to each person, I gave 30 Ghana. That's all, all I could afford. Th- that was those times. But now you can afford more, right? Well, now, you know, and not because it's coming from my pocket. Whose pocket is it coming well, from? Well, I get a lot of people who are interested in me. Ah. Uh-huh. Interested as in they think that you have something up s- sleeves that you can offer this country. Mm. So at that time, I was not known. Nobody knew me. Yeah. And it's difficult if you are doing a fundraising to get people responding positively. But now when I'm doing fundraising, I get people responding. Wow. Yes. So how many how many delegates do you have in your constituency? Uh, now? Yeah. Now we have 600 plus. But around that time? Then, then it was 400 plus. So if you're giving everybody 30 Ghana CDs, that's, you're spending about 12,000 then. Yeah. It was but difficult to even raise that amount at that time. Yeah. But the salary of uh, a, a member of parliament at that time wasn't anywhere close to this. Well, you can say that, yes. So it what was the motivation for, you know, doling out all that amount well, of money? Well, the motivation was to lead. To lead? Yes. To lead and to also um, do something for my people. At the expense of your bank account, well, your finances? Well, you can say that. But I felt that that, mod- that resource demand mm. was a challenge at that time. And I had to scale that challenge. Wow. So whatever it takes for me to scale it, if I have to, stu- to uh, speak to people to support me, I have to do it. Hmm. Yes. And that money didn't come from my pocket. Okay. I understand that. I got some myself. Mm. I got people to support me. Okay. But especially when you have to motivate, let's say, delegates to go and vote for you by facilitating them, do you think it makes the elections fair? Well, <clears throat> as for the transport, I don't see anything wrong with that. Seriously, like, like you said, there you. are others who actually give more. I'm sure some well, even buy. I think you know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sure you know. I, well, I can tell. Yeah. Because, like you said, your opponent in that uh, mm-hmm. during that time had more. Mm-hmm. He give more, but you still won. Mm-hmm. So, I'm, I'm I'm just wondering how it affects the legitimacy of candidates. Well, it does affect it. It does significantly it does. But you see, we have to come to a point in this country, and. Uh, the way our democracy is maturing over the years, we should be able to face this matter boldly and find a solution to it because it's getting worse. It's getting worse. Yes, I tell you. I think after 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 a number of primaries were conducted from both um, parties, leadership in parliament and personalities in this country, political personalities, have spoken to this. So this is not something new coming from me. Yeah. It's something that is known already. And, but we've not had the, um, the confidence to face it and deal with that. And it is, I think it is festering on and it's becoming a problem for us as a country. I think it's one way or the other, it also encourages corruption. And we should find a way to deal with that. I don't have the solution all before me, but I think when we engage as a country, we discuss it. We will be able to chant and, and find a solution to it. Do you think that's probably one of the reasons why a lot of members of parliament are tagged as corrupt? Well, well I, I, have, I have done it. I have done, I have doled up some funds to people, mm. but I'm not corrupt because the funds that I raised, I legitimately raised the funding. Yeah. I spoke to friends. I spoke to some corporate pe- um, people. Who I, I, I yeah, yeah. That, that aside, is yeah. the act good itself of funding your your delegates to come vote for you? There are people who took the money and still voted against. Yeah, you, that's fine. Yeah. But was it good? Was it, is it a good thing for I don't you think to? Anything wrong? Maybe we should look at the 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 the, the level. Okay, if I give like hundred Ghana or two hundred Ghana, somebody's coming from a distance. And I'll give 100 Ghana for transport. But it's their duty. 
well, as delegates. You see, we have and just the same way you say, oh, you want to help the country yeah. or serve the country, they should be willing to go vote as well. We see all these fingers are not equal. Yeah. There are people who are, you know, subjected to grinding poverty. And for some, if you don't facilitate their movement, it will even be difficult for them to join you at the center to vote. Okay, so mm. that's what I said. It's, it's about the level and how people go about it. But we certainly had to put in a certain guide and, and to be able to control it a bit. Otherwise, it gets out of hand. How? How? Wh- how? What do you think? What guide are you talking about? We can because legislate on it. I think okay. as a country, we can legislate. We can legislate, but if it is proven that you have given a certain amount to delegate, this this is tantamount to buying the election, isn't it? Well, people can make that argument, and it's a fair one. It's a fair argument. Yeah, it is. Hmm. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a fair argument to make that you're buying the vote. Uh, I personally think that going because forward, from where I said, especially for you who had to you know, get money from friends and whatnot. You become indebted to these people. And the argument will hold that once you get into power, you've got debts to pay. You see... So if you're going to probably, you know, fleece the state to pay out those debts, mm-hmm. you will. The, p- the point is that, especially members of parliament, we are so vulnerable. Vulnerable. We are so vulnerable in the context that, you know, we have three arms of government, any time something comes up about the welfare of the judiciary, nobody talks against it. It's almost, you know, accepted and passed. When the executive has to be given something, it's almost accepted. But it's only members of parliament. Mm. And it's because I think we have also not been, uh, parliament as an institution has not spoken up. We don't know what MPs take home. We don't know their their welfare package and all that. It's quite shorted, not to say, maybe for a want of better, we're not saying secrecy, but not known to the public. And mm. people tend to guess and hazard all sorts of uh, insinuations at us. People think that we take so much, but it's not the case. Mm. What they call as gratia, what we take home. The last time I think I took close to 20,000. Uh, 200,000. 200,000 as Gratia for members of parliament. I'm telling you sincerely, the, f- the funds that were spent or the money spent on the primaries, the my last primaries before, was more than that amount. The money you spent on yes, your primaries? Yes, it was more than that amount. But that was what was given to me as my S Gratia. And people think that it is so much. When we attend funerals, and we go and make donations at Funerals. It comes from our pocket. We, largely, we have to pay our, uh, what do you call it, drivers and all that. The cars that we drive, it is given to us as a loan. And it is taken, it is debited from our salaries. People don't know all this. So it's, I'm it's not complaining. Tough. I want to make this very clear. I'm not yeah. complaining. But the reality has to be known. Mm. That we are not getting so much. People think that we are making so much. But when you go to your constituency, early morning people come to you. You have to pay school fees. Yeah. You have to do mm. almost practically everything. Mm. Would you have been better off as a private individual? I don't know. I don't know. I pray to God to lead my people and he's, he's granted my prayer. I, I, I don't want to look back with uh, regret. But I'm only speaking to a situation we find ourselves in. Okay, I understand that. Yeah. But if it's that tough, why are you still in politics? I don't want to stop because I still believe I have something to offer my people. I don't you, have, you, have, you, have, you have served two terms, mm-hmm. right? Yes. You have not offered that to your people? I'm not done yet. You are not done yet. Yes. That's right. I'm sure <laughs> you're, you also have challenges. The oh, yes. You are sitting in oh, now. yes. yes. If, yeah. if, if we turn the microphone yeah. and I ask you the same questions, you will also itemize some challenges you are going through. It, exactly. And then exactly. I ask you, why are you still in the seat? You will say that you haven't achieved what you want to achieve. Well, maybe. So it's fair. <laughs> but the public, are, the public is not charitable on yeah. the members of parliament. Okay. No, the point I want to make is that we need to appreciate the essence of parliament. Yeah. Okay. And then parliament should come and tell the public what we are earning at the end of the day. Yeah. And the public should know what we are getting. I and think. Sh- believe that when we are able to do that effectively, 
the public will be a bit more considerate in their demands on us. I think even more so, I mean, around this time, the welfare of parliamentarians have been discussed uh, to a very large extent because of security issues in the past couple of uh, weeks. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm sure you know exactly what I'm referring to. Um, bodyguards for you and all because of some of you are being targeted and attacked and all. You would want to reiterate that call as well? First of all, I agree that I believe that we have to up security generally. Every Ghanaian matter. But ask yourself, why should that even become a topic that members of parliament are being given security guards and it becomes a topic for discussion? Why should it be? Mm. Why is it that the other arms of government, people are giving, the people are chauffeur driven, they have security? That is not a subject for discussion. Why should ours only attract attention to the extent that it's subjected to public discussion? Why? Mm. Maybe you have an answer. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't. I totally don't. <laughs> but anyway, l- let's move away from that. Um, so so uh, then we look at the, the news. Okay, news, we did a few things that I'm yeah. very, very proud of. You know, um, at our time, the polytechnics who were called Genoops have broken away from the fold of the news. And the news leadership was rotational. Then it was my time. We were able to amend the news constitution to make it congressional. Okay. So based on proportional representation of delegates, we meet at a point and vote. And as we speak, the NUCS leadership, the choice of leadership is, is done of Congress. So we well my entire we amended the constitution. Okay. And then we did something that I will I will never forget. For instance, the private tertiary institutions in, in Ghana, they were not benefiting from the Senate loan. I don't know if you know this. At that, before I took over, they were not benefiting from state loan, private tertiary institutions. I stood in myself and my leaders, made a strong case, and then it became a okay. feature. Okay. And private okay. tertiary institutions in Ghana now benefit from the state loan. Wow. Good stuff. Um, I, I'd have loved for us to stay on that a okay. little bit, but we're running out of time. So let me just find out from you. Um, December polls are around yeah. the corner. The president is number one on the ballot paper. Does it mean one term for Nana? No, it doesn't. Absolutely no. <laughs> you know, I've heard people speak scientifically uh, to positions on the ballot paper and its ramifications and effect. And I think I tend to switch towards them. I mean, extremely, those are on the last point and the, the first yeah, point. Yeah. There are implications. But regardless, for me, wherever we find ourselves on the ballot paper, we have done a few things in this country, even though people tend to under- say, that, oh, well, this is nothing, free SHS is nothing. If free SHS is nothing, when you see President John Mahama ask him whether free SHS, implementation of free SHS is easy or not, we have restored the teacher training allowances, the nurses training allowances, and we are doing a few things in this country in precedent. Nana Kufa, the first term. Yeah. That for me is significant. Now, the countries that we tend to cite as examples, Asian tigers, emerging powers, I do not know of any country in the world that was transformed so significantly within a matter of four years. No, there's no country like that. You can clearly see that we are doing well amidst all the challenges, space. Uh, what do you call it, uh, with the, the, the free SHS, some of the kids who don't have space and all that. That is why we are getting innovative. And as a thinking beings, when we implement a policy, and the policy comes with its ramifications and challenges, we tend to get innovative and come up with solutions. Right. And so far, Ghana is doing well. Well, I like how you sound optimistic. So for you, it's, it's a straight win for the NPP? Yes, it is a win. Now we are working on the margin to be able to increase it. I know President, President Mahama is throwing a lot of jobs here and there, but... Uh, you are unfazed. No, we will, we will put him out where he belongs. <laughs> <laughs> Lexus, Honorable Don Prayer was a very hard-working student leader. I admired him a lot. We were together in Casford Hall. Ask him if he remembers Harun Aoudou, uh, who was staying with him. I was his close friend. Uh, this is Abdullah from the US of A. Yeah. yeah. You remember I would do? I, do. I, do. I think yes, he's passed. The, yes. Yeah. Yes. That was an old. Is a recent message? 
No, no, yeah, he just came in. Haruna Audu. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he passed. He, he passed. passed. Yeah, you remind me. Uh, it's a very sad yeah. one. Okay. Well, you know, when he came, he was he didn't have a place to sleep, and I had to share my bed with him. Wow. And uh, one day I just when we finished school, one day I just heard that he passed on. You're a good man. And God bless you. Uh, I mean, I'm 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 glad I know you. Um, Unfortunately, we ran out of time, so there are a few other things I wanted to find out about you, uh, about you. But we'll wrap it up for here. But you've been now. extremely friendly towards me today. Oh, have I? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm always friendly. You have not been as friendly <laughs> to others. Are you really? No, I expected something else. <laughs> okay, but this is very friendly, and I commend you for it. <laughs> Thank maybe, you so much. <laughs> maybe you you decided to be friendly. <laughs> to put, and you realized I was so t- tired today, so you wanted. So to I decided to go easy on you. Eh? To go easy on <laughs> Thank you so I'm much. As sir. we wrap up, though, what's your final words to young people who are also coming up? I think that we should learn to let things go, and I'm sure that you want to go back to University of Cape Coast. Have you let it go? Yes. Now, are you Not seeing now, it now I or mean, what? Uh, you were a little angry at them earlier, so I'm surprised that you're saying I was a good you student. Then every one of my mates know I was a very good student. Okay. And they <laughs> gave me a bad class. Yeah. But thankfully, I have turned it around. I've done three masters. Yeah. I've done additional degrees, and I'm hoping to do my PhD. I'm seeking to be an expert in the renewable energy. Amazing. And it's going to happen. God bless you. I pray it happens. Thank you, Thank you so Thank much. You, Honorable mm-hmm. Frank, I know don't pray, is member of parliament for Enswam Adu Ajiri. He spent time with me here on Personality Profile with a very, very interesting conversation. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks to my team as well. God willing, tomorrow we're back with another edition of Drive Time on Joy. I'm Lexus Bill. The battleground with the MFI Apau is up next year on your super station. Stay tuned in. Mm-hmm.